Hello and welcome to Simply Intoxicating. The budget session of the Indian Parliament is almost washed out on the issue of bank frauds, which have apparently assumed very serious proportions in the recent months. Bank frauds are nothing new, but it's the quantum of the money which is involved in, in a series of scams being reported by the media on an hourly basis now, which has drawn the attention of the lawmakers, the civil society, the judiciary, everybody in fact, the entire business sector has serious issues now because the, the credit offtake has become a major issue. The RBI has taken several steps, but those steps are apparently not turning out to be and living up to the expectations. Several other steps which have been taken by government of India recently, those steps again, the issue is the, the loans are turning toxic, toxic. RBI, the regulator is splitting its hair. The investigating agencies are making a series of seizures. To what extent those seizures are really going to be recoverable so far as the loss is being reported by banks like PNB. So there are several other aspects, the legislative framework, the administrative framework, other ticklish issues involved in the whole framework of bank frauds. Which, which, are, which has come up as a serious challenge for the stability of the financial sector in India and has started impacting the economic growth rate. So we have four distinguished domain experts having several decades of experience who are going to look deeper into all these aspects and also suggest some of the preventive measures, some of those legislative measures perhaps what needs to be done, what the government of India or the regulator must do in order to arrest the decline in the situation and to improve overall and bring back the credibility of the banking sector and also the trust of the taxpayers or the common man which, which has been the patron of the banking sector. So we have Mr. M. L. Sama, the former uh, Special Director, Central Bureau of Investigation and also a very noted uh, advocate in Supreme Court of India. We have Mr. R. V. Sina, the former Director General, Controller of Auditor General of India, CAG of India. We have Mr. M. C. Joshi, former Chairman, Central Board of Direct Taxes. We have Mr. Anil Gautra, Executive Director, Andhra Bank. So let me start with Mr. Sarma, sir. Please tell us, how do you look at this whole issue? How serious it is? What needs to be done? These are two different aspects, of course, but uh, you, you, I, would, I would rather like to have your opinion on this, how you view the entire problem, the issue and how serious it is. Uh, Shailanjali, thank you very much for inviting me to the session. As you rightly mentioned, bank frauds in India have become a very, very serious issue. Bank frauds involve two aspects. One is the NP aspect and second is the distress assets aspect. If you look at it quantitatively, the figures involve the mind boggling. In fact, the magnitude of uh, this NPAs and uh, stress assets, etc., etc., has put a question mark on the efficacy of the banking system in this country. And as you rightly said, and I totally agree with you, that uh, uh, it is also affecting the growth of GDP in this country. Now, I have uh, five or six points to make about this uh, bank frauds and NPAs and so on and so forth. One is that as per my understanding, big companies in America and Western Europe don't borrow money from the banks. They have their own sources of money. Unlike this unfortunate India, the bigger you are, the more money you borrow from the banking system. Now this and another thing, our banking system is such that they open up your coffers, they open up their coffers to the rich and the powerful. But when it comes to a puny person, a cobbler, a rickshaw puller, a poor farmer, uh, they apply thousand kind of rules and it has personally happened with me, but I am not going to the personal matters. So therefore, a conscious decision needs to be taken by our top bank officers and by the Ministry of Finance and even at political level that big business people, big industrialists should not be given money so liberally from the banking system. If they want to go big in business, they should raise their own resources. 
Second point that I want to make is about the responsibility of the top bank management. You have your CMD, you have executive director, your general manager, and whole hierarchy of officers. My experience of 20 years in CBI, out of which four years only as a head of the banking and uh, you know, securities establishment is that it is one person who calls the shots in the banking system, banking world, and it is the CMD. Once he wants to give money to anyone, papers are put up accordingly, mostly. The credit mostly. worthiness is not required. Nothing is required. Nothing is required. Sir. You okay. see, even though the papers are put up by the branch manager, but he is a puny, tiny fellow, he puts up papers accordingly. And therefore, the top management should be held wholly and fully responsible for the NPAs and frauds that are taking place in our system. At this point only, I just wanted to sir. add to what yes, you carry on. Sir. That the point is that the CMD and the chairman of the banks are all political appointees. So there, I mean... Well, I, I, Yoshi, I totally agree with you. But frankly speaking, they have to be political appointees. But after appointment, you see, as we were talking earlier, I was saying that this kind of things happen, this kind of fraud, loot from banking system happen only when the caliber of the top bankers is low or they are complicit. You see, the kind of promotion system they have, the kind of hurdles they have to pass, I am convinced they are high caliber. When the top management of the banks are high caliber, then and if such kind of things are happening, it is because there is some kind of complicity with the borrowers. I am also not prepared to buy the argument that they act on the political directive. I will tell you the reason. There may be political directive here and there, but it's never in writing. No uh, politician will issue or no, uh, you know, bureaucrat in the Ministry of Finance will like to issue these directions in writing. So, therefore, it is only oral. Now, once you have become a CMD or executive director of a bank, why should you listen to the recommendation of somebody which does not fit into the rules, regulations and framework which you have set out for yourself. I will so, tell you the reason why. Reason is because there has been a quid pro. That is the reason. Sir, can so, I say something? I mean, yes, of course. Yeah, we, 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 yes. Okay. we will get the time to contest. No, no, it doesn't matter, sir. You can have that. Because yes, a lot of I, points I, have been made yeah. where probably I thought I should please, come please, in. Sir. Actually, sir, NPA is not today's problem only. It has been going on, but, but we have to But there is a to me. No, sir. We have to differentiate between NPA and fraud. You see, whichever fraud takes place, whether it is this uh, PNB, uh, LOU fraud or some other fraud, I am sure nobody from top management or from any political leadership will tell that you commit a fraud and give somebody money. They may say, okay, try to help him. If at all somebody says that, okay, he is a good customer dealing with us for such a long time, try to help him within the rules possible. It is not that they will ask a manager to commit a fraud to give money on LOU basis. So to blame totally for fraud, the top management may not be right as far as instruction. Of course, laxity in following rules, supervising, audit, everything I can say there, are, there is a role of top management in this majorly. Right, but sir. To say that they would have made somebody to commit a fraud may not be a right. Uh, I totally agree with you. Basically, I was talking of the NPAs. I totally agree with you that no top manager will like to be a party to the fraud. But basically, we are not losing so much money uh, through fraud. We are losing much more money through NPAs and stress, etc. Et so, you have to uh, look at that context in which sir, I was speaking. I fully agree with you in NPA. So, side. now the yes, point, sir. coming to the point that I was making was top management should be held responsible and once they have been selected to high offices, they should know when to say no and uh, how to say no. Any top manager who does not know how to say no, he does not deserve to occupy the high position that has been given to him. My third point is about collaterals. Even if you want to give money to various entrepreneurs for growth and development, but then 
you have to secure your loans you you have to look for uh, collaterals giving money without any collaterals is a suicide is being on a suicidal mission there is a third deficiency that i find the system because for ordinary persons you look for collaterals but for big and powerful you don't look for collaterals and this is what has happened in the recent uh, uh, lou matter punjab national bank and all that fourth thing that i want to say i am actually questioning the entire banking system is this uh, concept of consortium of banks is a very very disastrous uh, system that we have evolved in this country what it means is that one lead bank agrees to give loan and others follow it oh, without man. making any verification so if one man is compromised the entire system is compromised and money involved becomes very big so this also needs a relook re if there is need to consolidate the banking system you merge some smaller banks into big ones but only one bank nationalized bank uh, should give loan and not this consortium because consortium of banks I, our experience is that one person makes a mistake either deliberately or unwittingly and the whole system Good across man. the board suffers fourth point that i want to make is about the ots one time settlement i have seen cases 350 crores given and you are settling at 50 crores it puts me to shame as a taxpayer and as a, a senior officer who worked in the government of india for almost 40 years now is true that in hindi se bhagte chor ki langoti bhali but main counter question karta hu ki ye chor banaya kisne isliye even in ots in fact i raised the issue with the then banking secretary who later rose to be uh, cag and who be, uh, who made a big name for himself i said what is this happening against 30 pro 30 50 and 50 crores you are settling 50 crores he says nahi 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 uh these uh, bankers they have their own system and i can't interfere or intervene in this matter as a banking secretary but what i'm saying is i'm not saying that the one time system should be totally outlawed but there has to be some proportionality in what the bank has given and what the bank is taking back from the defaulter my fourth point is <clears throat> when the banks today onwards give big loans to the borrowers they should also check whether they have borrowed any other monies from other nationalized banks private banks i don't care because not that's not my money now he has taken loan loan from bank a from b from c from d and therefore i who am a big lender i have no information about it so therefore there should be you know there should be a column when you are making a report uh, to know as to which bank he has borrowed as the money from so diligence. that he has a proper perspective about the uh, I credit worthiness track record track record, record of the person this kind of system i think it's, it's, it's there it is there now it's there it is there, yes. there. Yeah, yeah, there. i will come to point by point yes, yes. Yeah. i am happy that it's there it's i stand corrected another thing i have uh, handled some cases where uh, the top bankers say that when there is a good party we go and offer him loan i don't know from where this system uh, marketing and, and those loans go bad you are giving money on the platter to so called prestigious party the recent case uh, bhandari or something uh, their banking system has lost about 400 crores and one small bank lost about 50 crores and i said why did you give this loan he says oh it was a very prestigious party who went to him and uh, uh, first we gave him uh, 25 crores he returned the loan and then he asked 50 crores and that 400 crores has gone bad and our 50 crores this old british system because you see when these systems were uh, in operation people had higher level of integrity the level of integrity has gone down we should change our system also and the most important point and this is the last one which i want to make is that time has come time has come when the government of india should seriously think in terms of denationalizing if not all at least some of the nationalized banks it can't be personal gain and public loss which is happening in the today's banking system banks are looting money uh, sorry lo losing money to rich and powerful and government is recapitalizing them and where is the money coming to the government it is our the tax payers money yes so therefore maybe one or two banks state bank of india etc they may continue in the 
nationalized sector, smaller banks either you merge into the existing big banks or they should be denationalized. I am not prepared to buy this argument that private banks um, are not uh, are, are losing as much money as the nationalized banks. They are losing much less money. And even if I assume for argument's sake that they are losing as much money as it is a private money, somebody else's money, it is not my money. So these are the basic like points to, okay. that I wanted to say, make about yes, the You would like to yeah, say, yeah, yeah. I would like points, to like say, sir, with the due respects to whatever you have stated, because your experience is quite uh, long for a particular line of activity. I, as a practicing banker, have got certain uh, other views on some of the issues. NPAs have actually to be divided into two. We cannot generalize that all NPAs are either fraud or willful defaults. There are large number of NPAs which uh, uh, the loan becomes uh, bad or NPA only because there are certain factors in the economy which are playing because after all the banking system is not uh, just recent, it is a very old history and large number of NPAs were there even earlier. Frauds were also there but frauds of this magnitude probably not there. Uh, yes, have correct. not come earlier. Now. There are loans which have gone bad, became NPA because of economy, like steel industry, uh, infrastructure sector, which probably banks were not earlier doing. It is after 2001 or 2 when the government started giving a push to infrastructure and there were no term lending uh, developmental institutions like IDBI, IFC. They are converted into uh, universal banks. It all came upon all universal banks to finance this activity. Economic growth was very good. Now for a road project, let us say, I mean what kind of collateral you can take because the road is there and uh, the fellow will not have so much of uh, security to give because the road contract will be of 300, 400 crores. Nobody, the economic growth if uh, India has got, it is all because of the activities which in infrastructure, steel and other industries which brought this situation. Now corporate loans actually do not constitute more than 35-40% of the total loans. 40% of the loans go to SME, agriculture, priority sector and another 20-25 goes to retail, remaining comes to corporate. Now to say that NPAs are everywhere but corporates are more because the amounts are very large and uh, actually there only large problem has come about in banking industry because in SME and others recoveries also take place but right. uh, NPAs don't even the collateral in such SMEs. a big way. Right. Now <coughs> as far as the NPAs which are due to normal course of business there is a different activity I mean uh, recovery process that has to be carried on. But the fraud element is to be dealt with separately through uh, various uh, legal methods, investigating, putting them into, uh, because these are all criminal cases and that has to go very fast. Because any case happening today, if decision is taken after 10 years or 12 years or 15 years, it will lose its importance, money will go, public money also will go and it is very difficult to retrieve the money which has already been lost. So a quick, uh, uh, this uh, approach has to be there to recover it quickly. As far as NPAs are concerned, even there, we have got uh, DRT Act which was brought in to actually speed up the things because earlier civil courts were taking long time. DRT really brought a lot of improvement, but then Surfacey also brought large uh, improvement in this. But then people started using uh, and high courts who were not supposed to give stay orders, they also started giving stay orders into surfacey as well as under on DRT issues also. With the result, the, uh, the pace of uh, justice system became very slow and recoveries have become slow and after a long time even the uh, assets which are there of the company, they also go away, particularly the working capital because fixed assets still there is a possibility that land and building will remain and some machinery, I mean, whatever. Sorry for one point. You see, legal aspects are all right, but real question is how to minimize yeah. 
occurrence of entry True. and that's the question. So, uh, due diligence is the important thing as you said that uh, initially itself care should be taken that track record of the uh, borrower is to be seen. As far as pressures are concerned you said to say that all loans would be given only on pressure may not be a, a right way to look at because we will be then losing the plot. We are not actually looking at the, uh, we are going to deny that there is nothing wrong elsewhere. This is only top management who is giving instructions. But one thing is there sir, you know, if we look at our GDP, this NPA is now, they, it constitutes almost 9.8% of GDP which is pretty high worldwide if you look at any economy. No, no, NPAs have grown in the past four or five years in very uh, large speed, can, uh, very can I, high can I speed. Can oh, please sir. Yeah. Uh, Talking about uh, NPAG, uh, you know, the, what uh, uh, the, the executive director is saying, I think it's not a <clears throat> simple thing. This problem is was there, as uh, Mr. Sama said, this problem was there for a pretty long period. The growth, uh, India had the growth cycle. So at the time of funding for the growth, large scale funding had been done. At this, uh, t uh, during that period, what had happened that we never bothered about the SS asset at all. We are talking about only NPA and there was a system of declaring an asset there. So different kind of restructuring methods were used. Thanks to the previous Reserve Bank Governor, you know, I must congratulate him because he was the person during his period in 2014, what Mr. Sama was telling, he introduced the system in the five years back or four, four years back that there should be a central repository of all the loans of more than five crores right. and it should be available across all banks. So on a click of a button, anybody asking for more than five crore loan, all others are knowing how many, are, how much money is there. Thereafter, he took the asset quality review. So all the assets of the uh, bankers, I mean, so the loanage were totally reviewed and thereafter they took the decision. Slowly they started. So during the last three years, he refused to give the excuses to continue the non real non-performing assets asset as assets asset. He started asking them to clear the balance sheet. And what has happened? I talk about the, this is not a, it's a systemic failure because in India, you see way back in 2001, 2002, IFRS accounting standards which were made applicable initially in 2000, that was corporate to India and in connivance with the those in the Ministry of Finance, they blocked it for 15 years. In, you just see the IFRS implementation across the globe. India is the only country which has not followed even today. Totally. They are having Indian um, uh, accounting and still adjusting a little bit, you know, way back in. So what I'm trying to say, this, the entire ICAI unit, they saw to it that, that uh, those standards, which should have been implemented in 2000 itself, for, they were not implemented for 50 years. Now, what has happened till now? NPA, so as a result of that, what I was saying, NPA has not gone up in the last four years. It's not that all the companies are failing now. They had been failing for some, some time now, but that was not being depicted. Thanks to the RBI's initiative and the pressure from the, I mean the, the ICI, that they have started uh, putting pressure on implementation of the India. India has started uh, two years back. Now from the next year, the entire IFRS will be virtually made applicable to the banking sector. NPO will further go up. So as of today, it's 8 lakh 50 thousand so for last quarter. Sir, one point. Yeah. Contain, there are 20 sir, yes. public sector banks, let us say 20 or 21, including State Bank of India. The NPA is a problem in every single bank, including the State Bank yeah, of India. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Now, this particular fraud, leave aside for yeah, a minute, that is fraud. only in one yeah. bank. As of now, at least, it has been detected only in one bank, that particular type of fraud. Frauds take place everywhere, but... Uh, to that volume as well as that type of activity only at one place we have so far come to know. Now one thing to say that okay all the 20 banks function in the same way that is the blame goes to the top management in every place you could not get even one chairman who was honest or I think that is something difficult to uh, understand. Sir, then you kindly give us uh, explanations. Yeah, for I will now, give you. That part we accept. 
that the certain sectors of the economy are yeah. going because of global reasons. That is what I so say. So maybe 50 percent explained, but remaining 50 percent is also so huge. Yeah. Sir, if if that is not the reason, then what could be the possible reason? I, I will tell you. I, sir. We admit that argument that steel sector is going down, other sectors are going down. We forget about that. That is understandable. But how about the rest? Sir, the corporate loans which were there, I mean, uh, let us go dispassionately into it. Where the loans have gone to NPA, loans have gone to NPA in large steel sector. Earlier, real estate sector, you are yourself seeing in the market that all, most of the real estate builders, they are stuck. Large number of NPAs have gone into that field. People have not given the position. The construction is stopped either due to lack of money or lack of sales. So you can say that economy is playing a role as far as certain sectors are concerned. Then there are uh, the similar thing happened in 91, 92 also when large capacities were created without looking at whether there will be sales or not. At that time also large amount of NPS came. Then again 2001, 2000, 2001 again that similar kind of thing happened. It has happened now mainly because of economy. Now as far as due diligence is concerned I agree with you that this multiple there is difference between consortium bank, banking and multiple banking. Multiple banking which was there which has been stopped by RBI about 5-6 years back was also responsible for this kind of uh, situation that any bank could get up and say that okay as you said somebody will be going and offering because I am flushed with money I want to earn income because large deposits with us we want to invest so we sometimes I tell you it is wrong actually I don't justify that to increase the balance sheet size we try to simply push money. Right. Somebody will do in retail side, which happened in USA and all, which happens sometimes in private sector even today, that large amount of loans given into retail sector, private sectors actually, private sector banks mostly concentrate in retail sector loans and big loans. They don't go into agriculture and other things. Whereas public sector banks will do probably every activity today after the development institutions have gone, they would do every activity. No, but then the latest information, which I think you must have read yesterday, I, uh, Mr. Pangaria says that even the private uh, priority sector advances given by the pri uh, private sector banks are much better than the public sector banks. Sir. At percentage wise. Sir. So it's not correct no, that sir, no, they are not uh, giving no, no, priority sector I will advances. correct you here. Uh, yeah. The priority sector, every bank is supposed to give 40%, yeah. whether it is private sector mm, or yeah, public sector. Yeah. What normally private sector does, mm -hmm. I mean I will not pick up individual bank, but normally what they do since their reach is not into these rural areas and 18% mm -hmm. out of that mm -hmm. is agriculture mandatorily out of 40%. Mm -hmm. So they can't do that. What they do is they buy loans given by other cooperative right. institutions right. or right. these banks. Mm -hmm. So the return of that is less. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Total num amount of loan, they somehow reach the target because that is a must. They mm -hmm. can't do without mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So to say that qualitatively they are better off would not be a right idea because after all, uh, the, the, you know, we are getting right, to sir. the same activity. The point, I was just quoting Mr. Pandaria. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Mean, he, he, he was saying no. yesterday only. <clears throat> See, he mm -hmm. might have some, some information about certain banks, but mm -hmm. I don't think when you are but catering sir, you know, to a particular activity, let's say Andhra Pradesh. Mm -hmm. Now, in a uh, few years back, you know, there was a problem of MFI sector. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the problem was into banks also that because when there is a drought or when there is a economic failure anywhere in agriculture also, you will and even politicians going and telling that you don't pay loan, I will get it uh, waived, waived or it will be waived when the election comes. At that time, whole of this, all these sectors in that economy will get affected. Rural area, you will not get back agriculture loan also, you will not get back other loans uh, as well. Yeah. Because Sorry for, film. you see how the banks invest their money, that's the bank's problem. It's not our problem for the purpose of this discussion. Our problem is how the banks secure the money that they are lending out. Absolutely. That's the question. So now, yeah, are you, sir, are you anyway suggesting that uh, the systems that our nationalized banks are following at, the, at present, uh, they are quintessentially fine and no fine tuning is required? No, no, no. Uh, 
I so, I will never say that so, because there is a lot of scope for him. Not even some scope of improvement. There is a lot no, of scope for improvement no. because it is not that every, if everything was fine, yeah. we, we, we we wouldn't, wouldn't have, have faced this situation. This kind of <laughs> when I was telling consortium banking and all, because risk gets bifurcated in various institutions. But when you say, I definitely accept if institutions are large enough, they are in a position to take the risk of a particular big loan, they should take it. But normally, why consortium system came up? It came up because everybody didn't want to uh, expose yeah. themselves very high in a particular company, right. in a particular field. So that is why it got distributed. If one company goes bad, it will not be one load on. Now, let's say… So kind of risk precise, management. That's the precise point. Yeah. Yeah. One particular bank doesn't want to expose in a big way, which means that they are not sure of, they are not sure of what they are doing. That's, that's exactly my point, yeah. yes. which means that they are prepared to lose and the process, they are also making others lose. No, sir, so risk I have management. So, I fundamental objection. Risk no, this is a part of risk management. Let us say that I depend solely on one activity, one company or one area. I am exposed to larger risk. So, what I say, okay, my risk taking capacity in a particular company, that, that is why these you have in companies the exposure norms group exposure norms. It is because I would not like to see that my whole capital goes into one company and if it goes bad, my whole capital goes. You know, yeah. other 99% loans so. remain okay. So, to say that totally leaders. consortium banking, consortium loan system is not good and it should be stopped, I don't know whether it is possible because even when we become big, we will still have limitations in taking one company. That is a basic risk management principle. But anyway, I will not uh, go further on that beyond that. But sir, you know, major okay. chunk of loans, sir, which has gone to certain sectors, for instance, you said real estate. Steel, you said, or real estate. Right, sir. Again, the banks have got norms for exposing themselves to No, sir, but to I would like to add area. one point, Not sir. more than… It is being reported now to, to, to the Ministry of Finance and various agencies also, maybe sir would like to highlight this, that huge amount of such loans have been diverted. Yeah. It has been laundered out so of India is, or maybe in India and other no, sectors. No, this is fraud actually. Now you say… Uh, because, because you don't know this NCLT proceedings, in case of some of the steel companies now, this uh, Binani cement, for instance. Now, the latest allegation which has come, even after Dalmia cement got it, is that huge amount of promoters that took away the money yeah. from that. Now, sir. And these are all loans. This is the again. fraud element. Yes. Right? Now, True. let us say that if I, consortium banking, strictly speaking, if five banks are there, five banks okay. are supposed to exchange the statement of account and see it also. It is not merely taking a statement and putting in the file that this is how his account got operated because he will not operate in all the five banks. He will operate in one bank normally, but what they do is what they want to conceal from this bank, they will go into this bank, they will go into the other bank, but they are, these banks are supposed to have a meeting every month, exchange these notes, exchange the statement of account and also peruse it. There the problem lies that just because he is big, and we need not see everything or leader would be seeing everything is something foolish actually. Yes, true. I fully agree but with it is you happening, that there sir. is a lot of uh, uh, requirement of… Systemic reforms at that uh, level. Reform in that sense. Actually, I would say that there are officials who do it, but there are large number of officials who skip it, casualness, indifference. Mm -hmm. There I would like to blame the bankers that they have not looked at that how the money was getting used. Now, Kingfisher Airlines, let us say, if a particular time the company's, company was one of the best yes, airlines or well. whatever they say, but at the same time the banker was not knowing that when other people are uh, hand to mouth like Indigo etc., even with low fare, no food and all that, this fellow is lavish to, so this business model needs to be corrected. Somebody, if not the promoter or the board of directors of that company, at least the financier should look at what is this kind of uh, yes. company you are running. Yes. Yes. You are likely that he has taken the money into liquor, taken the money into cricket right. or wherever, because I don't think in cricket he would get loans. He right. would have got the money from somewhere. Naturally, and yeah. there the problem lies actually not looking at, not looking at is also could be 
some element of lack of uh, knowledge and lack of training of the people who are involved in. Now, if I say that branch manager is supposed to see each activity and uh, see what is being done, at that level, if there is a laxity, just because, okay, the customer is very big customer, I need not look at, that is his... Uh, uh, big flaw there. No, so, but uh, frankly, bank manager, you know, from exp administrative experience, I say, he becomes too small to question the activities of the big uh, borrowers. So, therefore, something has to be done at the corporate office level, I, a particular level. I don't say uh -huh. that corporate so, office is not at all guilty, just as what the uh, manager is looking at or me looking at. That person at top is also looking at this is how this airline is functioning. I am his banker. Whether I should not look at in case of fraud, the case of uh, PNB, let us say LOU. Now, one manager, at least whatever has come in public domain, has been able to manipulate the system. But how he was allowed to manipulate? Exactly. Nobody looked at. You see, suppose uh, we are all talking, five people. Uh, your department knows today something is going on. Here, some discussion is going on. There would have been people who are uh, interested that, okay, what type of discussion? In the bank, if one manager is doing everything, LOU, okay, he has not put in the CBS system, but one day after the LOU has gone, the money should come into my Nostro account it has to come not that particular credit only. There will be every day some thousand credits coming. If thousand parties, now let's say your son has sent you money. That also goes into the same Nostro account where the money relating to one of these LOU would have come. Now thousand slips have come. It is not that thousand have not gone to CBS system. 999 have gone because the money has gone into account of the customers. But how this one got missing? Right. Exactly. 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 And if the balance sheet size, in fact, I have been told, I don't know how far it is true, that three banks from abroad who discounted also communicated to them that look at why you are doing it for one party and repeatedly. Right. Yeah. You see, exactly. when you are exactly. giving money, Correct. Yeah. suppose you are supposed to give money and, for and 90 not days. once or as many as 1600 LOUs. 90 days you are supposed to give <laughs> 1600 money. 1600 LOUs. And if it has gone for one years. year, first of all, sir, uh, in manual system, a auditor will come, he will look at all registers, activities are there, even if this... Uh, uh, activity is through a computer or through anything. We are today also supposed to download what is there in the computer, the financial statement and then audit it. Now similarly, this particular uh, machine which communicates the LC or LOU, it is supposed, even if it is not connected to my system, CBS system, I am supposed to see as an auditor that what has happened during the day. Hey, okay, no, auditor. That's that hey, point. Hey, hey, here yes. again, uh, one auditor, thing I would like to say. Just, sir, one no, minute. Sir, but this issue, sir, or the audit part, we will discuss in just, part just two, sir. I will come to the, the next before that. Okay. Okay. Before that, sir. at the end of the day, as a supervisor of this uh, gentleman who was supposed to be issuing LOU without, I am also supposed to see in manual system register now at least I should know that there is no register, I have to see the computer, I have to see the messages which have gone because the messages are not pure messages like emails, they contain money, they contain a document which is going to convey to somebody in a foreign country that this bank is supposed to pay, so he is committing the bank. Am I not supposed to see that chart at the end of the day right. that what is happening and what is this man doing full day if he is... Uh, he is sitting there, Correct. what type of business he is doing? Correct. Am I not supposed to see as a supervisor? So right. there is a laxity at particular level and this fraud definitely cannot be done just at one computer and one person. Yeah. Right, sir. So yeah. Because on this note, sir. Yes. there are definitely few people, as I mentioned to you, there are in the bank, there are 100 <coughs> people sitting in that or 50 people are sitting. People would know what is happening. This... Uh, uh, this gentleman who is this party who is dealing with us doing this much business 
Right, sir. So, yeah. somewhere, you know, on this note, we would like to wrap up this first episode. In the second episodes, we will touch with the same uh, distinguished panel, the audit part, the loopholes in the criminal justice system. Then, of course, various other steps taken by the government. A new bill is already tabled in the parliament, the Fugitive Economic Offenders Bill. So, we will touch how effective these steps are going to be and rightly suggested that that it's not possible. The system is there. There is an oversight. There is complicity. There is apparent case of connivance. And also, of course, some of the systemic failures, as rightly suggested, that some of the practices which are being followed for several decades, perhaps those practices need to be reviewed and the top management has to be made more accountable. You know, I mean, certain things may go wrong, but top management cannot get away like this, saying that some of the junior, of, you know, the bankers were involved or hand in glove with somebody. So on this note, let me wrap up. Thank my guest and thank you for watching TILT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.